Let us join together in prayer. Universal Spirit of infinite wisdom and love, we come to you in prayer, asking for help, support and consolation in our times of need. We aspire to become known greater within your likeness as we strive to seek your inspiration and guidance. Divine Spirit, we ask that your healing messengers may support all those in need represented in our hearts and prayers, and may your grace support and strengthen them. In these times of change and uncertainty, we pray that you may guide our world leaders to make the right decisions on our behalf. Heavenly Father, guide us to succeed in life, and in return, we simply thank you for being there. Amen. chosen today is called Problems and it comes from the book of Guidance from Silver Birch. He says the greatness of the soul is discovered only when it conquers difficulty. Discouragement is good for the soul. You must learn to allow the latent greatness of the soul to express itself. That is why you are living in a world of matter. Discouragement is not the end. It is the beginning. There is a power within you that is greater than anything that has yet been expressed. The great spirit is not found when life is easy. The great spirit is found only through struggle and difficulty. The pure gold has to be crushed before its richness and beauty can be made known. The gold of the spirit cannot emerge until it has been purified and refined through sorrow and hardship. There is no other way. If some tell you that there is, I do not know it. Your world is the world where mistakes are made. In correcting them, your spirit grows. It is indeed a boon that those are called upon to face trial and difficulty, obstacle and handicap, are in the end better equipped than those whose lives is too often a bed of roses. The power of the spirit does not express itself when all goes well, when the sun is shining and there is not a thought to disturb the soul. The soul comes into its own when it has to meet challenge and difficulty, when it can call upon the inner divine and armory and allow the weapons of the spirit to come into the great battle of existence that is part of the overall plan. Do not complain about difficulty. Difficulty is good for the soul. You may not like it at the time that it comes, but you'll look back and thank the Great Spirit for the opportunities that were given through difficulties 
to enable the gold within to be excavated. If every soul that incarnates found life an easy pattern to follow, there would be no development, no unfoldment, no character, no attainment. It is a hard lesson, but the things worth attaining are those which are the most difficult. The prizes of the spirit are not come by with ease. Hi everybody. I wanted to talk to you today about belief. And for spiritualists and people who believe in life after death, belief is such a big thing because we are looking at a world that doesn't end. We're looking at believing in something that many other people in the world don't even look at. But for me, one of the greatest parts about my own belief was how it came to be. And I think the first time I ever walked into a spiritualist church was an incredible moment in my spiritual journey. Up until that point, I had had various experiences as a kid. But as a kid, you don't really know what's real and what's not real. So little predictions would come to my mind or I'd see somebody or maybe catch light round people. I had no idea what any of these things actually meant. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I visited uh, the local spiritualist church to me in Glasgow at that time, Somerset Place. And I went there because a friend of mine tragically lost her brother in a house fire and she asked me if I could take her to see a medium. And I must be honest, at that time, I had no idea what a medium was, what they did. But through the grapevine that was hairdressing, I managed to find a way to get to a spiritualist church close to us. And it just so happened, or as fate would have it, the medium who was on the platform that night was a woman from Edinburgh called Mary Duffy. Many, many people in the spiritualist movement then and even now will remember Mary Duffy. She was an incredible medium and a lovely ambassador for the spirit world. But to us newbies, we had no idea that she was so sought after. And when we sat down in the front row, assuming if you sit in the front row of this spiritualist church, you're bound to get a message. Something I've learned doesn't actually happen. <laughs> but on that particular night, my friend Christine was so grief stricken that it was quite plain to Mrs. Duffy that this young lady was in trouble. And she came to her and said, sweetheart, I know that you've just had a loss and I don't need to be a medium to do that. And she says, I would quite like if I could speak to you alone after the service. Now, I had no idea what mediums did or what the protocol was, but I thought that was a very kind thing to do, not to have my friend display her emotions all over the place and in public. But during that demonstration, Mrs Duffy then turned to me and she said, the young fella beside you, you do know he's a medium. And my friend looked at me astoundedly and, and I actually looked behind me and beside me. And I thought, what's this woman speaking about? She gave me a message then from my grandmother, whom I'd never met, but she told me all sorts of things that I was to go home and ask my parents about, which I, I duly did, and found out that everything Mrs Duffy said about my grandmother was actually true. But it was the last part of her message that really got me. And that's when she said, you don't yet realise, son, but in five years' time, you will be standing on this platform right where I am now, and you'll be doing exactly what I am doing. And I thought, this is crazy. This lady is crazy. But the one thing I remember at that moment was as she spoke to me, I noticed that there was lights appeared around her. Just little, I don't know, a glow. And I thought everyone could see that, but they couldn't. And that was about the extent of my spiritual awareness, if you like. I saw the aura around the medium when she spoke to me. But I was totally taken aback and it was something it took a while to take in. This woman told me I was a medium and I would be standing on this platform in a church and giving messages just like her in five years. It was strange because at the end of that service, Mrs Duffy did come and speak to my friend Christine privately and, and she gave her the most beautiful message and was very caring and compassionate with the way she dealt with it. And then she said to me, Laddie, I want you to go and speak to a lady called Jean Primrose. She says she has a little church around the corner from here and she helps people like you to develop their gift. She gave me the address and told me when the, the church service would be on. And um, it wasn't long after that that I visited my first ever spiritualist church. 
For me, I didn't know what I believed in back then, but it's through the great experiences that I've had in this time on my journey with the spirit world that have told me that I no longer just believe in a life after death. I no longer just believe in the spirit world. It's a knowledge. And it's that knowledge that helps me now and has helped many, many people that I've been able to serve with the help of the spirit world to give them belief and even beyond belief to show them that we can't die. In fact, we can't die for the life of us. I say it many, many times. A quote I've used from the great Doris Stokes. I really hope for all the people who are involved with spiritualism that they allow themselves to remember the brilliant episodes that they've had that made their belief into a knowledge like mine. And I hope you remember that when the world is in this state of confinement, when people are being told that they've got to stay at home and they're in lockdown. And I tell people everywhere today when I do talks online or whatever, they can lock your body into a place, but they can't lock your mind. 